Hello Sim Racers and welcome. I'm Aristoteles from Kuno Simulazioni and tonight we are live streaming on how to balance the tire wear. So, thank you so much for joining uh, tonight and uh, first things first, sorry for not being able to do another uh, live stream last week. Uh, unfortunately, um, <coughs> old age, <coughs> my back was uh, hurting quite a bit uh, last week. I don't really, to be honest, I don't know why, uh, because I didn't, you know, pull anything and I don't remember to get any cold, but, you know. <laughs> so I had, I, I really had to decide either if I had to, you know, do the live stream or, you know, being able to, to breathe, so <laughs> it wasn't really possible for me to, to do the live stream. But, uh, okay, I got some, uh, some time to, to rest and uh, I'm better, let's say, pretty much better. So here we are tonight, and tonight uh, I want to get back to do some, um, you know, theory, uh, live stream, and I want to talk to you about uh, how to, to balance out tire wear during a uh, race stint, which is something that I often see many people uh, having issues. Uh, it is because we have arrived up to a point that, you know, simulators are so advanced that you, you simulate everything. And obviously the tires are not prescripted things anymore. They are dynamic and depending on what truck you are driving, what car you are driving, what is your driving style and what is your setup, the tires will get worn differently back and forth. And that obviously going ahead with a long stint is going to uh, influence quite a bit the balance of the car. So tonight I want to you know, talk about the, the situation, see what we can do if we can do something to uh, improve the, the problem or even cure it if it's possible. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, so that's it. So let me check a little bit the, the chat and see how you guys are doing. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. Nice to be back with you live. Uh, how can I stream during the Italian football? There is an, well, first of all, there is a match. Second of all, what is football? And third of all, all this is happening in Italy. Good to know. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I hate football. I don't like it. I mean, maybe I might watch, you know, national teams every once in a while, but I, I really hate it. I think it's one of the worst sports right now because it's not a sport anymore, but it's a business uh, that there are uh, out there and I hate it with all myself. So no problems about that. Hello, Sim Racing 604. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for, the, uh, for, for your uh, streams, actually. So, guys, as if you don't know, go and check his channel and, uh, and uh, you know, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. All right, so what are we going to, to do tonight? Uh, let's go in-game. Uh, switch off in performance mode for the Streamlabs so it doesn't take much resources for my uh, computer and um, so um, tonight I would like to get something a bit of an extreme situation uh, so um, I will get the Lamborghini which is one of those cars that it is very heavy because of the BOPs many people say oh you know the BMW is so heavy or the Bentley is so heavy in reality the BOP equalizes all the cars in similar weights so uh, obviously, the BOP also gives more and more ballast, more weight to the cars that they are successful. And we arrive at a point that we have some of the cars that in theory should be lighter, you know, like the Lamborghini, and they are one of the heaviest cars in the game. While maybe you see the Bentley that this is so, so big, but in reality it's lighter. And by lighter, I don't even mean that, you know, just by 5 kilos or 10 kilos, but sometimes even by 20, 30 or even 50 kilos sometimes, depending on the circuit and the series. So Lamborghini, the Huracan, is a very, very heavy car for the series because it has tons and tons of ballast, usually up to 90 or 100 kilos of ballast. And it's all at the rear of the car. Uh, it's a very rear uh, weight bias. And as such, uh, it tends to, to uh, consume quite a bit the rear tires. And if you consume the rear tires more than the front, then obviously the balance 
of the car, the uh, handling of the car will change as you keep on racing during a long stint. So I would like to try and show you what is happening with the Lamborghini, for example. Obviously, this is the same for all the other cars in different ways. We will explain this also tonight. Um, and I've, I think we're going to do a couple of laps at Brands Hatch, mainly because it, is, uh, uh, it has a lot of fast turns, um, right-hand turns. It's a very clockwise track, very little uh, number of turns to the left, which means that you keep on consuming your left tires. And at the same time, it is also a track that you can lap in a pretty much low lap time, 1 minute 25s, you know, on the race, 1 minute 24s, uh, which means that we can do, you know, a couple of laps without wasting too much time. It would be probably easier, I mean, it would, be, it would have been probably better to go to a track like Suzuka. Uh, Suzuka, we know that it has a very abrasive, ag uh, aggressive asphalt, very abrasive and it consumes the tires a lot. Uh, it also consumes the tires in an equal way, left and right. So you can see very nicely what is happening back and forth without having issues left and right. But every lap time, every lap is over two minutes. And you know you, you need an eternity, and you might do mistakes. So it's not easy if you do a mistake to redo the other set. So for tonight, we're going to try, I think, Brands Hatch uh, with a Lamborghini for starters. Uh, we're going to see what is happening, and then maybe we can also try if we have uh, the time and <laughs> the physical condition. <laughs> we could also try a uh, front, uh, front weight uh, BS uh, balanced car. Okay, so let's get in. Uh, it's typical, uh, so it's midday, hot weather, branch huts. Let's go in. Uh, so let's start with the questions also. Tonight it's going to be a MIA, so AMA, so lots of questions, I guess. Uh, Mike Evans already says, who decides uh, where the ballast goes, the championship or the Lamborghini? The ballast has to go in specific location uh, on the side of the driver. It is homologated, so the Lamborghini has to homologate the car um, uh, for, for the series. And in the homologation papers, there is also the ballast placement. So um, once this is homologated, they cannot change the placement. There is a little bit of leeway, so they can go a little bit you know, forwards and backwards, but we're really talking small amounts. Uh, the ballast inside uh, Assetto Corsa is placed directly on the center of gravity, but the center of gravity is moved already to take into account uh, the fact that the ballast and the kilos of the ballast are into that position where it should be. Um, hello, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, Stephen. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. Uh, hot weather, says CC driver at uh, Brands Hats. Yeah, probably it's not correct, but you know, mm, lately, uh, <laughs> global warming, so yeah. Hello, Steve Bug. Glad to see you too, guys. All right, so um, let's see if there are any other. Uh, hello, NC. Let's see if there are any other uh, questions before we start. <clears throat> Hello, Atana from Belgium. From South America, not stated. <laughs> nice. Gu Guayana. Gu sorry, I always pronounce very badly that, that country. I have to learn how to pronounce the name properly. It's a... Uh, Interesting card. Yeah, it's always fascinated me that that country over there. It's it's very fascinating to me. Very, I don't know. It's it's different from all the the rest. And somehow, uh, Biman, we are going to talk about all of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Przmek, uh, uh, Prz Przmek. Uh, sorry, sorry again. I butchered your name. Sorry, mate. Um, asks, uh, do tires wear more on higher grip tracks? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It depends um, on the amount of abrasiveness of, of how aggressive the asphalt is to the tires, because you have different type, type of asphalts. 
Uh, it depends also on the on the curbs. So if you go over the curbs, you know they get worn differently, and different curbs wear the tires differently. So it's not just okay. A truck with more grip wears down the tires more. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Actually, it could even be the opposite because if you have a truck with less grip, like Suzuka, for example, the tire slides around more, and by sliding, and if also the asphalt uh, has, you know. Uh, uh, a surface that it is very, very uh, uh, abrasive and very bumpy, then it, it really warms out the tire much more than, say, uh, a surface that it is uh, a track that has a surface that is very grippy but also very smooth. What is in the water I'm drinking? <laughs> water. This time is water, I swear. <laughs> um. Yeah, so Dimitri. <laughs> We will we will not work too much on the internal medium outside temperature. A little bit, yes, but not too much, and I will explain why is that. Hello from Brazil. Hello, Maru. All right, all right, let's go. So, first things first, as usual, we're going to get the um, aggressive setup and do some laps, all right? Now, normally... I advise you to do this kind of work after you have already a decent setup, okay, that you feel relatively comfortable with, and you can do uh, at least four or five laps with consistency. I not uh, advise you to, um, to, to do this, uh, you know, while you are on the top of your performance. You can do it, but... It's probably better to, okay, as soon as you have some consistency on the track and you feel safe with the setup, start working, you know, on the tire wear and see what is the situation. Because, of course, you're going to improve your, your driving, of course, you're going to improve the setup, but at least you're going to start having an idea of, okay, what is going to happen with the car after 10 minutes, after 20 minutes, after, you know, 60 minutes of stint. So uh, don't wait too much to do this. Uh, uh, Artis says, uh, hello Artis, says, how much tire wear impacts braking while following a car? Does lack of downforce impact the braking distance with different wear? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. The less downforce you have, the more you're going to wear your, your tires down, and uh, the, uh, the, the, the less grip you're going to have uh, either way, so yeah. Is the wear besides ideal line higher? Uh, possibly yes, because you slide around a bit and uh, the asphalt is more rough. But obviously you need to go off, off the ideal line for a lot of time to see you know, a difference. Um, there was another thing. If, uh, if I, so Tom, Tom X says, if I brake hard and lock up, my tires recover or the flat spot remains? No, the flat spot remains. It's impossible to recover from a flat spot. Flat spot is death. Yeah. Can I have credits? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Sorry, I didn't understand that. Uh, well, less downforce means that uh, you have less grip, and less grip usually makes the driver slide the car around a lot, or more, you know, more than, than it should be. Hey, hey, Kritish, very glad to see you too. Guys, uh, Nicola, we will talk about the tow in a minute. Uh, since last update, no rain effects in cockpit view in single player unless starting rainy weather. That's strange. I don't know about that, mate. How you... Tomek says, how I drive the first two laps, does it dictate the life of my tire? Pretty, pretty... Uh, actually, quite, quite a bit. Quite a bit. We will talk about that also later. Okay, let's start, let's start. Uh, keep your questions for later. Let's start doing some stuff. So as we go ahead with the theory and I can show you some things, I'm pretty sure that some of your questions are, will be answered and some new questions will come into the surface and we can reply to them. Okay. 
Hello, Gopnet. Hey, mate. Hello. Yeah, yeah, better, better. Thank you. All right, let's go. So, aggressive setup. It's destined for this truck and car here. Uh, so, I will try to do four laps. Four laps in the aggressive setup. And see what is going to be our... Um, our uh, tire wear once we've done, all right? RDG with tomato. <laughs> Possibly, maybe without onions, sometimes, because otherwise it becomes too much for me, but not, not always. Okay, let's go. So, excuse me if I won't be very consistent, I hope to to be better, we'll see. So, first, four laps. Just four laps, uh, pushing. And let's see what we're going to do. Oh, understood here. So now I will ask you a little bit of patience as we do at least four laps. And it is important to do at least four laps. Now, uh, it's four laps that it is important to do in a consistent pace, let's say. Uh, it's not important if you, uh, you know, if you go out and uh, your lap is not valid or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just keep on lapping. We do not care really about the uh, lap times right now. We do not care really about, you know, track limits. Uh, what we care right now is to do and finish those four laps. Hello, new flow followers. Sorry, but I cannot read exactly the Cyrillic. So I cannot really pronounce your name. I think I'm going to do a terrible error, so I will not say it this time. <laughs> That's such a nice car, what a great engine. Well, um, the Lambo has more setup uh, possibilities, in my opinion. The Audi is, you know, it's pretty much, this thing works and works pretty much everywhere. Um, the Lambo is, is uh, heavier because of the BOP, unfortunately. I think, in my opinion, it has a better engine even though the engine is the same, but 
uh, in my opinion it's tuned better on, on the Audi or the uh, Lambo uh, but it is heavier and as such because it is heavier it, it requires you to work harder and the aerodynamics also require you to work harder both in driving and in the setup while the Audi once it's work uh, it's it's easier you know I mean it's not an easy car to drive but once it's work and the, the setup um, values and variations that you can do are less so you find a solution this is it you stick with it and you start driving you know and it works pretty well while the Lambo needs more attention while you going from track to track Pressures, pressures are always much more important than everything. Oh, it's hot today. I'm already sweating. <laughs> Yeah, the, v, the V10 of the Lambo is amazing. It really is a true work of art. One of the last normal aspirator cars. All right, one more lap. One more lap. The setup feels good. The V10 of the Audi and the Lambo are the same. Obviously, small differences do exist, both in terms of the electronics, on how the engine is tuned, and so on, but mainly the engine is the same. But its, it's company evolves the engine differently. So... There are differences. There are differences. Oh, a little bit too much. Uh, yes, Mike. It's pretty much like that. Um, you know, the graphics might show sometimes a little bit of, you know... Okay, so, four laps, let's stop here. Um, hey, Marcello, welcome. So, let's go back to the garage. So, we did four laps, okay, all were pretty much around one four, uh, 24, point, uh, 24 highs. It's not even that bad for a race, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> sorry. Um, for a race uh, pace. Okay, so what what we want to to have a look uh, now? Well, the pressures were not bad, so let's go directly and have a look on the tire wear. So, as you know, first of all, the tire wear that we show in a set of Corsa, uh, differently from all our older uh, simulators that we did, and also you know other simulators of. of uh, of the market, uh, you know, old simulators were showing a tire wear in terms of percentage, for example. So you have a 100% and then you had the tire arriving at, I don't know, 70% of, of wear or something like that. In the Seto Corso Competizione, instead, we are measuring the actual millimeters of tire uh, tread uh, that there is. And this is the actual official data that Pirelli gave us. So practically, uh, I don't know if you have ever seen, but tires, slick tires have uh, across the surface, they have very small dots, okay? So you rotate the tire, and at some point you see those series of three dots usually, outer, mid, and in, uh, th those very small holes. They are actually holes, and you can put a probe in it, and they go down to three millimeters. 
And those three millimeters, three millimeters is actually the depth of the tire thread that you can use during a stint of, uh, of a tire. So this is what, what we are showing uh, in, in Assetto Corsa. So when you see here in where three, 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 that means that the tire is new. And if you stick the probe on the holes, you get a three millimeters depth of tire, tire thread. As the tire gets consumed on the surface, you stick obviously the probe and the surface, because it has been consumed, it goes closer to the bottom of the hole and so it gives you a lower number. So in this case we did three laps, all right? Uh, sorry, four laps, uh, four laps. And uh, this is the result actually. So the result is, and I'm going to get the inner side of the tire. Uh, uh, it's good to see what is happening also on the outside of the tire and in the middle, but for this thing I'm gonna, uh, for, for this uh, explanation, I'm going to get the inner side of the tire here. Uh, let me also check that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, and as you can see here, let me check if everything works, yes. So at the front, the inner tire has arrived at 2.87 millimeters of depth. Okay. Um, while at the rear, it has arrived uh, to 2.83 millimeters of depth. To, to make it clearer for, for you, actually. Let me see if I can, uh, where are we? Uh, possibly here. Okay, so to make it clearer for you, it means that we start with three millimeters and at the front, we now have 2.87, all right? Which means that you, we consumed 0 0.13 millimeters of tire surface. That's it, mainly. We consumed 0 0.13 millimeters of tire surface. At, at the, that, this happens at the front. At the rear, all right, we did 3 minus 2.83, we consume 0 0.17 millimeters of tire surface. That means that already we see that just by, uh, by four laps, we have consumed significantly more the rear tires than the front. Okay. Now let me show you uh, how actually this works in terms of you know tire grip. Okay. Uh, so let me go into here, where you should be able to see. Uh, pop, 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 pop. Here we. Are. All right. So this is. Uh, a graph of what is going on with oops with the tires in a set of Corsa competizione, but also obviously with the actual real tires of uh, of Pirelli. Okay. Now I'm I'm showing you practically both the front and the rear. Um, let me just eliminate one of those just to be. Okay, so let's say, and we don't want the other eclipse like that, actually, like this. All right, so this point here is to show you where we are at the tire. So what is happening uh, initially, okay, and you can see it here at the start, is that the grip of the tire, when we have the three millimeters, so the, the tire is completely new, okay, the tire is completely new. The grip of the tire is a little bit lower than perfect because the tire is so new it has the patina uh, on top of it it's, it's a little bit slidey it's not yet run it's not a, a tire that has done a couple of kilometers uh, thank you paolo and ivan for joining so um so what is happening is that you start from the pits completely new tire and for some meters kilometers okay it doesn't take a lot usually one lap two laps depending on the circuit one to two laps depending on the circuit uh, so for the first lap let's say for the first lap uh, the tire uh, gradually gets scrubs the initial surface that is a protective film and everything and gets up to perfect 
um, perfect grip like that. This is the so-called, as we say, qualifying grip. So after a lap, you are up to the qualifying leap, uh, grip. At that point, the tire gives you 100% of the grip that can give you. Okay, it's in perfect conditions. Now, you keep on doing laps, one lap, two laps, three laps, and um, at some point, all right, the tires step off, and we say step off uh, the qualifying grip, because actually, as you can see, and this graph here is not uh, made by, you know, by luck, it's, it's relatively um, accurate, what is happening as you move along and consuming the tire, at some point, the tire goes down in grip in a relatively significant way. And by significant way, I don't mean that instantly you start sliding around, but you do understand, and you also see it on the lap times, when the tire is on the top of the performance of the qualifying first th three laps, about three laps that it needs, maybe four, depending on the track. And, and then after those three laps, it steps down and goes into a more stable grip that goes on for a lot of time during the whole stint of, of the race. So that is why we say that the tire steps down from the qualifying grip. It makes a big step in, in performance down and then remains relatively, I mean, it still loses a little bit of, uh, of performance, uh, but as you lose grip from the tire, the car also becomes lighter, and those two things practically equalize each other, and even if you feel a little bit the tire sliding around, you're still doing the same lap times as usual, from you know, the, almost the start of, of your stint towards the end of the stint. Your lap times stay pretty much identical. Um, yes, this is a distance grip chart. This is a distance grip chart, RDZ. Um, also, another very nice uh, question, Mr. Lucas says, does the tire consumption affect the diameter of the tire itself in the simulator? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. When we say that you have three millimeters of tire, all right, and you lose two millimeters at the end of the stint, it means that your car will go down lower by one millimeter, because obviously you lose, you know, two millimeters, one up, and it's, it's circular, so one up and one down, it goes down, so the, the whole car lowers by one millimeter, and that's obviously, we know how those cars are extremely sensitive in aerodynamics, which means that it will influence your aerodynamics as the tire gets, you know, uh, more and more consumed, so always keep that in mind. Okay, so, um, is, is this clear enough? So is it clear that, <coughs> sorry again, um, is it clear that uh, the tire goes up to a maximum grip and after four laps, five laps, three laps, depending on the track, okay, uh, it steps down from the optimum grip uh, and it is a significant uh, difference in, in performance and then remains I mean, it loses performance, but it loses in a very gradual way all along for 60 minutes, which is a long uh, race stint. Uh, okay. Uh, marble, yes, as well. Of course, it means that on all gears, a uh, worn out tire will be shorter gear ratio because it is smaller. And on new tires, it will, it will be longer rea uh, gear ratio. Obviously, we're talking about one millimeter, so you know, it, it doesn't mean that you're gonna gain, you know, uh, kilometers per hour in difference. Right. So, um, okay. So why why we're talking about all that and why this is important? Well. I can tell you that the qualifying grip uh, ends um, I didn't understand your question days, but because we're talking about tires, we will talk about that later maybe, all right? So if you stay until late, keep your question and we can discuss about that. Uh, 
so actually, because you ask, the 2021 tires works in the same way. 2020 and 2021 tires are the same. They work in the same way, and they are they have a little bit more support. So they are not as you know uh, they don't they influence as much as the 2018 and 2019 tires. The 2018 and 2019 tires had even bigger of a step during you know uh, the consumption of the tires. So they are even more difficult to, to handle, the 2018 and 2019 tires. Uh, while 2020 and 2021 tires, uh, they still have it, but it is less. The influence is less. Anyway, um, as I was saying, here's something that you need to know. At around 2.9 millimeters of depth, 2.86, 2.88, 2.9, somewhere around there. There are other factors too. But somewhere around there, this is where the tires are losing their qualifying grip. Okay. Now, what that means? It means that in this situation here, we have the front tire, which is almost still on qualifying grip. You can see that we consumed in four laps 2.87 at the front, this is the remaining tire, okay? While at the rear, we are at 2.83, which means if we go back to our, um, uh, to our graph here, okay, let me show you. So let's, let's say we have the green tire is the front tire, okay? And the blue dot is the rear tire. Okay, great. Now, that means that after four laps, we are in this situation here. Let me try to pick it up as good as possible. So we are into this situation here. So as you can see, while we both started with all four tires with the same grip, so usually, you know, sim racers, what they do, they can do infinite laps, they don't care. So they start from the pits, they do three, four laps, mm, setup is so-so, okay, back to the pits. Three, four laps, change a little bit the setup. Three, four laps, change a bit the setup, and so on, right? But if you're doing three, four laps, you are always remaining somewhere around the maximum grip of all the four tires into this situation here, okay? But if you are going into the race, after the fourth lap, so you go into the fifth lap, the sixth lap, and so on, you will find your uh, tires to have the front tires on almost maximum grip, while the rear tires are already under the step. They have stepped off the qualifying grip. And that means that instantly, you find yourself with perfect grip at the front, and less grip at the rear. And this is why so many sim racers are complaining in a Soto Corso Competizione that after a couple of laps, my car becomes undrivable and I spin or I have issues and I know how to cure it and what is happening. This is what is happening. What is happening is that after four or five laps, you have your front tires that are, you know, on a good grip. And then you have your rear tires that are under the qualifying grip. And so you have an imbalance in grip back and forth. Especially with a rear heavy car, this means that your rear end is going to be more and more unbalanced and very difficult to cut, and you're going to get more and more oversteer, especially turning in. Turning in, you have maximum grip because the front end is well loaded. So you're turning the turn, maximum grip at the front. The rear end goes lighter. The rear end raises, so even the aerodynamic balance moves to the front but you don't have support from the tires because the tires are already consumed and you have this imbalance in mechanical grip and this makes all things worse and worse and worse. Somehow, you know, with a little bit of experience and so on, uh, people survive, you know, the, the drivers survive the situation and they arrive into these conditions at some point. Okay, now, as you can see from the dots, both front and rear are over the maximum qualifying grip. Uh, both front and rear are now, I don't know, we are, at, uh, for example, at the 10th lap or the 20th lap. Uh, and as, as such, 
both tires, both tires on the front and the rear axis, they are on the race grip. Okay, you can see still that the rear tires have a little bit less grip than the front, but the difference is not that big. The difference in grip is not that big. Y you are losing very little difference once you are with both the tires over that qualifying grip. The qualifying grip is a big difference. And then you go down, and then you know both tires keep on uh, consuming their surface, but the difference in grip between them is not that much anymore. So this is the trick. This is why once you go away from those five, six terrible initial laps, with where you th think that the car is completely destroyed, then you know you manage to survive. All clear up to here? Hello, Linda. Yes, there will be a replay. What is the average lifetime of the tires before 1.5? Uh, yeah, the, again, it depends a lot on the track, the car, and the driving style, of course. Easily one hour, very easily one hour. Mm, possibly 1.30, with a bit of, uh, you know, uh, attention on some tracks, you could even do two hours uh, with the tires at 1.5, 1.4 millimeters. Uh, hello, Loco. Hello, Matthew. Hello, <coughs> Ayub. Okay, what else do we have here? <laughs> yes, the Porsche obviously is another extreme uh, uh, condition car because obviously it's very much rear weight. Uh, so, you know, you're going to have issues there all, as well. Okay, so. Um, is it all is it all clear for you guys should i move on so the the main thing right now as you can understand is that um we have a big step in tire performance that occurs at around from the third to the sixth lap of a race so if you want to have a well-balanced car it means that you will be forced to sacrifice a little bit of the balance of the car for the initial four laps. Okay. Um, all right. All good. Good. Okay. So how how can we do that? How can we? Um, because right now we are into this situation. Right. So right now we are into this situation here where we have uh, this kind of uh, consumption on the front tires and uh, much higher uh, consumption at, at the rear tires. Hello, blame Andy. <laughs> yes, I can sign your driving gloves. <laughs> Andy is our server uh, administrator, so if uh, you have issues with our daily races on, uh, on our Discord server, always Blame Andy, Andy Mon, yeah, <laughs> but a great guy. Um, okay. All right. So how can we how can we improve the tire consumption of this rear left tire in this truck with this car, right? So how can we do it? How can we get better? How can we consume less? Well, first of all. There is practically um, three things that you need to keep in mind. Number one is that nothing substitutes driving style. Nothing. I mean, you can do whatever you want with setups, with telemetry, with whatever. The changes are going to be minimal. You are going to have really minimal changes in tire wear. It's the driving style that changes what is happening to the tires all right so slide less uh drive in a way that i don't know maybe accelerate more straight whatever we are not going to touch this tonight so we will we'll try and talk only about um uh, setup changes but it is important to understand that if you are not consistent on your driving 
then you might do this kind of tests and you might have completely different results from one session to another just because you were inconsistent so you changed a little bit your driving style okay so keep in mind that the driving style is what changes a lot the driving style can also do another thing that i would like to show you now one guy on the chat i don't remember his name sorry about that but he asked me um is our our driving style or how we approach the first lap of the race with a car is it going to change how the tires are going to you know wear for the rest of the race absolutely yes because as you see we did four laps and we were pushing the car okay so because we were pushing the car we arrived at a situation where the distance in tire consumption between the front and the rear okay was something like that okay and it was important all right so the front was up there and the rear was up there and that was only in four laps only in four laps now if you could do those initial three laps just three laps the initial three laps in a way to protect your your tires so try to not you know push so much try to not uh, i don't know exaggerate uh, um sliding stuff like that be as smooth as possible okay you could arrive after four laps in a condition that is something like this okay so as you can see the front and the rear tire wear would be closer and this is what we're trying to do always to have the front and the rear tire wear get closer okay if you manage to do that for the three laps it means that on the fourth lap or on the fifth lap okay you are going to find yourself into this condition here And that means that you have no problems anymore. The car will maintain its balance. And that's important. So yes, your driving style at the initial laps is extremely important on what is going to happen after those initial laps. Okay, you push too much, you're gonna have balance issues after three or four laps. Then you're gonna get some balance back after, I don't know, seven or eight laps, but you're gonna have issues on, on that range of laps you don't push too much on the initial three laps then you have the opportunity to have the whole of the rest of the stint with a much more balanced car so keep in mind that uh, so driving style is very important to deal with this thing um yes stomach uh, absolutely absolutely the, the even now here's the situation let me show you this okay so let's go back to the to this uh, thing here. So you say, okay, car is, um, you know, fresh tire is uh, three millimeters. We did four laps. We consumed uh, uh, 0 0.13 millimeters. What's the big deal? Mm. Well, the big deal is that we did four laps and a 60 minutes stint race uh, in in branch hats i can tell you because i did the math before it's 40 laps in 60 minutes which is a typical stint for the tires and for the driver obligatory by the way by the rules it's around 40 laps 41 42 40 laps so that means that let's get back to our uh where it's calculator all right so that means that in four laps we did 0. Point, let me 0. 0.13 millimeters of consumption tire consumption okay 0. 0.13 millimeters of tire consumption in four laps in 40 laps that means 10 times more okay more or less things will happen but it's a good uh, rule of thumb 10 times more which means that multiply by 10 we're gonna consume the front tires by 1.3 millimeters okay 1.3 millimeters the same thing at the rear we consumed one point sorry 0 0.17 multiplied by 10 
that's a big difference. That's zero point, almost 0 0.5 of a millimeter in tire wear difference. So you can understand that this, if this is the situation, okay, uh, it means that at the end of your racing stint, you're going to have a big difference of grip at the front and at the rear of the car. Okay. That big grip, uh, difference of grip, if you haven't taken it into account, it's going to completely alter the balance of the car and you're going to have issues. Or if you have been you know, meticulous about it, it might even improve the balance of your car and be faster. Okay. So you can see that even minimal differences here at this initial test we are doing in just four laps, it becomes uh, multiplied by 10 at the end of a stint. It's not just, you know, by, it's not double, it's not triple, it's 10 times more. It's 10 times more. So it's a big, big deal if you can improve just by 0.01 millimeter in the tire wear in these four laps tests. All right? Okay. So let me know if guys is clear until now, and then we can try something. Uh, Abdullah uh, Abdullah asks is if the um, if the tire change is the tire change um, compensated uh, because of the tire wear by the change in the fuel load at the end of the stint? Well, it depends on how the car is made. So, for example, the fuel tank in the Lamborghini is pretty much close to the center of gravity, so you get uh, the whole car raising a little bit the right height, but you get the rear end lowering by one millimeter, maybe. Okay, so it turns out decently. So you have to deal only with the mechanical grip difference for the balance of the car. In a car like the Porsche, for example, that's a whole different problem because the fuel tank is on top of the front wheels, which means that when you have 100 kilos on the front wheels, the front end will go down. Okay, and then you have very low fuel at the end of the stint, and the front end will go up. But we also get the rear end going down because of the tire wear, and so you have more negative rake, and the car becomes more and more understeery for the Porsche, for example. Uh, in a front engine car which has the fuel tank on the top of the rear wheels, the opposite happens. So it, it depends on the car. It depends on the car quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tony, I won't go into the OMI specifically for, for a car right now because we're talking about a different subject, but from what you're describing, it's... I mean, it's 99% uh, something in driving style. Um. <laughs> okay, so, right, so, we talk about that. Number one thing is um, driving style. We explained about that. Even take it a little bit easier at the start improves a lot. Cool. Number two, number two. Why do you want to improve the tire wear? Every time people ask me, you know, oh, I have the rear tire wear, it's getting worse and worse and worse, and how can I improve it? Well, it's difficult to improve something that you ask always performance from, you know. I mean, you have a rear wheel drive car, you have lots of weight at the rear, you want the car to slide a little bit, because you want to do, you know, you want to make the, the, the turns better. So why think always in a one way kind of way, you know? So why do you want to improve the rear tire wear? It's not much you can do. You can do something. We can we will see this later. But number two, think opposite. 
So number one, drive is tight. Number two, think opposite. Don't try to improve the rear tire wear. Try to make worse the front tire wear. Because what is happening here is that the front tire, uh, the front tire wear is simply not enough because there is not enough weight. There is not enough grip. There is not enough force to consume the front tire wear. And paradoxically enough, it's easier to make the tires worn more, to make the tires work harder, than it is to save them. When you save the tire from consumption, it means that you're going to lose some of the performance, right? When you are asking a tire to get consumed even more, it means that probably it will give you even more performance, or at least you are not asking for less performance, which is a very good thing in our case, because we want to go faster. We want to not lose performance, but have a better tire wear balanced out car. So if you know that by the end of the race, you're going to have at the rear 1.7 uh, millimeters of tire wear, it means that, let's do the simple arithmetics, so 3 millimeters minus 1.7, you will arrive with 1.3. Very particular track, but 1.3 is at the limit, but it's possible. Okay, so why ask from the rear less performance and instead make it in a way that the front, instead of you know, arriving at 3 point, we said 1.3. Instead of arriving at 1.7, it could arrive at 1.5 or 1.4. If the front arrives at 1.4 consumption, that means that the front and the rear will still be pretty much balanced because they will be in similar consumption levels. So we want performance. Instead of trying to save the rear tire wear, let's ask more from the front tires and make them consume down. The performance hopefully will be the same and the car will remain balanced, all right? So how can we, how can we do that? You cannot see me, that's unfortunate. Okay. Yeah, Andimon is extremely right this time. <laughs> uh, Andimon says, I paid for the whole tire. I'm going to use the whole tire. Absolutely, yes. Um, guys, I don't know if we have a problem in connection. Let me know if you can, if you can see me. Can you still see me? Do we have a problem with, uh, with the connection? Because I, I've seen the live stream, you know, buffering. So I'm not sure everything works properly. Okay, cool, cool, nice, okay. Cool, so we said, number one, driving style. Number two, let's consume the healthier tire even more. That's what we're going to do to go and try and see. Okay, so how can we do that? Well. Uh, we have a very easy setup parameter that can help us quite a bit, and that is tow. Okay, let's uh, show you a little bit what we mean by tow and how we can uh, make this happen. So let's go to the graphs over here, and this time let's go to the alignment. Well, first of all, uh, you know, guys, that. Um, No, I think you cannot see this. Give me a second, guys. Nope. I'm messing around. Give me a second. All right. That should be correct now. I keep changing stuff. Sorry about that. Okay. And it's like that. That should be. Correct, let's see. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, as you know, we use a lot of camber with the tires. We have talked about this. 
Uh, on the straight, the tires obviously touch the ground only with the inner side because we use the, the camber, but on the turns, the tires flex, the sidewalls flex, and we have the biggest uh, footprint of the tire possible. So that is why we're using a lot of camber. Now, this is interesting for us if we want to consume more because it means that during the straights, right, just the inner side and some of the middle side of the tire touches the road. Okay. Um, so this means that um, if we are going to have a look at the tires from above, I'm exaggerating. If we want to um, keep a little bit of toe, usually at the front we do toe in or toe out. Uh, usually we do toe out at the front. So we are in a situation like this. Okay, watching the tires from from the top. The tires are into this configuration when we are going straight. Okay. Now this is very handy because obviously we have talked about this and it makes our steering wheel even and our turning even faster, but it also consumes the tires and especially consumes the tires on the inner side which touches when we are traveling at the front. It will also provoke and create some rolling resistance extra and that will lose us a couple of, uh, a little bit of speed, but we are talking about, you know, at max, I don't know, one kilometer per hour, maybe in tracks with, you know, short uh, straight lines, not even that, not even that. So if, you, if we add tow into the front tires, we are going to drag them more, okay? even on the straights, which usually on the straights, the tires are not consumed by much. But by adding tow, and because we also have a lot of camber, we are going to consume them in a considerable way. And that means that the more tow we add, the more we consume them. Vice versa, if we go and eliminate as much tow as possible, right, and we have the tires straight while we are you know, going into a straight line, we will consume the tires as little as possible. So let's do that and see what is going to happen. So what I want to do, go and do here is, obviously I'm gonna put new tires, again, three millimeters. Let's go back into the game. And this time I am going to exaggerate a little bit the toe at the front. Oops, sorry, something negative, something like 0.25. Um, it's not really that much. Uh, teams use even more than that often. So zero uh, negative in this situation, 0 0.25 degrees is not that much. At the same time, I would like to put the rear toe as low as possible. So I'm going to go down to something like 0 0.5 at the rear. You could go to zero, but you need a little bit of stability at the rear end. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's good to have a little bit of positive toe at the rear to have some stability. You can exaggerate it. I mean, in the end, another thing you can do is lower a little bit the camber. So try to, oops, sorry about that. Try to not go to as full as possible negative camber. Go a little bit lower, minus three degrees, minus 3.2 degrees and try it like this. So we are not going to do anything else. We are going to try like this and see what are the differences uh, in, uh, in tire wear, all right? Again, we are trying to gain even 0 0.01 millimeter of uh, tire wear. Even 0 0.01 is enough because remember, 0 0.01 at the end of the stint is multiplied by 10. It's tenfold more. So 0 0.01, it's going to become 0 0.10. So that's a big difference, OK? Um, all right, Lupo says, uh, what are some usual values for the tow rear and front in rear racing GT3? Well, you see them. You see them, actually. Uh, this is pretty much, I mean, the values that we have here are from the limits of the real cars from their setup uh, 
limits possibilities. And the setups are also close to the real car. So what you see is typically what is happening. OK, so let's go for another four laps, right? And see, well, first of all, we have to check and see, OK, what is going to happen uh, uh, with, with the balance of the car. Probably we might get a little bit more uh, slidey rear end, more oversteer. We'll see. If that is the case, we're going to change uh, other things on the setup to you know, accustomate and uh, rebalance the car out. All right, let's go. V10 intensifies. Heat up everything. Hello, Cole. All good. much. My bad. It's a bumpy track. I love it. <laughs> no, BNNT doesn't save, uh, ACC doesn't save the tire wear data anywhere. A little bit over steering. So this is something that we need to take care of because the, the car has become more over steering. Yeah, Cole, absolutely. The safe setup uh, uh, method is, is amazing. It works really well and it teaches you both how to understand the car and how to, you know, make the setup work for you. And it's fun. I think it's fun because you can see instantly the changes that you're doing as you're doing them.
Oh, my bad. I'm reading the chat way too much again. But okay, we did the uh, the four laps again. As I told you again, this is not about being fast or you know taking care of the trial limits or whatever. You just have to do the laps consistently and uh, don't stop. Just do the four laps. At the end of the four laps, exit and check the results. So let's go back now. Okay, so back to the garage. Let's have a look. I'm not sure if I did four laps or five laps, but doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. What we are trying to check now is the difference between front and rear. Okay, not the difference in consumption between the front, the, the first set of the tires and the second set. We don't care about that. We care exclusively for the difference between the front um, axis of tires and the rear axis. So let's go here. And uh, ooh, ooh la la. That is interesting. Look at this. So, guys, this is, this is very nice. So with the first stint that we did, we had a 2.87 uh, wear at the front and 2.83 at the rear. It's 0 0.05 millimeters of difference between the front and the rear. OK? Now, at the second stint, the second uh, st uh, tire set that we used, possibly I didn't went so fast, or maybe I did a, a lap less. doesn't matter. But the important thing is it's not that much that we consumed less, because possibly we did less, less laps. But the important thing is that we did 2.90 at the front and 2.88 at the rear, which means that the difference between the front and the rear tire is just 0 0.02 millimeters. So from 0 0.05, we ended up with a difference of 0 0.02. It works. It works. So we did the three things here. We did driving style, not too much. We made the, the front tires, we tried to make them wor work more. Okay, so we did a couple of changes on the um, on the toe uh, to make the front tires consumption get higher and at the same time we did a couple of changes of the toe at the rear and the camber at the rear to make the rear tires consumption a little bit less the end result is that we ended up with much less difference from the front to the rear now the setup is a little bit too much over steering, so this is easily fixed. We can go at the arrow and maybe lower by two the rear right height. Another very interesting thing that you can do to make the rear tires consumption less, especially especially on tracks like this that you keep on turning towards one side, okay? Not on tracks like Suzuka, for example, where the turns left and right are the same number and you will see at a track like suzuka that uh, the consumption left and right is similar uh, in in a track like barcelona or brands Hats, for example you can see that uh, the left tires get consumed way much more than the right tires okay you can see that the right tire is over here uh, the consumption is much less than on the left tires. So in in tracks like this, it helps to lower the preload of the differential. Now, why is that? Why do you want a more open uh, differential? When you have a very locked differential, so high preload numbers, the differential is locked. The moment you go on the uh, accelerator, obviously, it's the the inner tire is going to slip okay so it starts to slide it starts to to slip because the differential is so closed and so locked it's going to try to slide also the external uh tire which means that the more you stay on the accelerator the more you're going to slip both tires and obviously 
especially the outside tire, it's going to get more and more and more consumption, right? But if you lower the preload, something like 50, that means that before locking, the differential will let the inner wheel to slide a little bit more, dissipate some power, okay, and then it will engage also the outside uh, tire. That means that the outside tire is going to slide less, it's going to slip less. Less slip, less slide, less tire consumption. So an upper differential in this kind of tracks, okay, with where you have to accelerate in many uh, turns into one side, it will help the outside tire to get less consumption. So that's one thing. Um, we did the toe. We lower a little bit the aero, and we can do something else. We can ask from the front tires to work harder. And how do you ask from the front tires to work even harder, except from the slip? Well you can overheat them a little bit. So if you are in an extreme condition, again, we're talking about extreme conditions here, right? So hello, hail me, Jonathan and uh, Sepega. <laughs> hello, guys. Thank you for the follow. So if you are in an extreme situation, extreme car, extreme circuit, you really want to balance out your, your car, right? So what are you going to do? You could overheat a little bit the front tire. An overheated tire in the same identical conditions, so same slip, same grip conditions, same performance, same uh, driving style, the overheated tire is going to get consumed, uh, is going to wear down faster than the same identical tire in the same identical conditions, but not overheated. So the heat also accelerates the consumption of the tire, right? So how are you going to do that? Well, one less brake duct at the front. And I will leave the rear brake ducts as there are. Again, we are not here trying to make the perfect uh, setup. I'm just trying to uh, exaggerate some setup choices to let you understand how you can balance out the, uh, the tire um, consumption. Okay? So let's try this. Let's go back here, select a new tire set. Okay. Let's go for another four laps. Car feels a little bit understeer right now. Let's see if it balances out after a couple of laps. Uh, yes, Andrea, I will. It won't be easy, but I'll try. A little bit under steering right now. Thank you, Biman. I'm very, very glad that you like it. Ah, car starts to become more neutral right now. Temperatures are rising. That's my bad. Possibly I can go down a little bit on the brake bias here.
<laughs> Tortellini, yes, that's, that's always the number one thing to do. Drive better. There is no other way around it, unfortunately. Or fortunately, you know, for, for the best of us. <laughs> No, no, pressures are always number one thing. First pressures, then a decent setup, then consistency, and then you start working on this. Hey, Tiago, thank you so much, mate. Really appreciate it, thank you. You can see right now how actually the front left tire starts to overheat a little bit and goes also up in pressure. This is good, this is exactly what we wanted. This is why the setup is always a compromise, okay? Always a compromise. Again, I am exaggerating the situations right here and the conditions uh, in order to show you the results. Uh, you won't need as big compromises uh, on your own setups, on your own practice laps and, and races, but you get an idea of what is going on. Lap time seems identical as before also. Not stated, welcome mate. <laughs> well done, mate. That's the fastest lap. And Bina, welcome. And Frank and try so many people thank you guys welcome to the channel remember to subscribe hit the like join our discord server all those very nice things have some fun together Giovinazzo! Alright, 13 laps. I think we did 4 laps again. So let's go back and have a look what we did. Ah, here we are. Well, we did even more laps than before. 2.9, 2.88, so it works it works again i'm exaggerating a little bit but now this is i mean let, let's do the math right so <clears throat> hey rishab uh, how are you doing mate i'm doing i'm doing fine thank you so much uh anthony anthony asks when the tires are light green uh, as they were now that i was driving do they already wear faster or what you meant was with even more heat no no i mean if they are light heat if they're light green or they're going towards the the yellow little bit it means they have more heat on them more heat more consumptions that is that is not because that's a simulator or that's a set of course no that is number one rule of the universe <laughs> more heat more consumption. It's always like that. More heat, less efficiency. It's like that. So, um, let's do the math, right? So, let's do the math. So, practically, um, after 40 laps, okay, 
we saw that we have uh, now 0 0.1, okay? So after 40 laps, that would be uh, multiplied by 10, which means that the three millimeters, what is this? Sorry about that stupid thing so from Unreal here, sorry. Uh, so that means that uh, the, um, uh, after, after one hour stint, 40 laps, the front tires will be at exactly two millimeters of uh, tire tread left. So one millimeter uh, consumption, two millimeters left, okay? The rear tires are going to be, sorry, so the rear tires are going to be 0 0.12, right, yeah, multiply 10, 1.2. So there you have it. You're going to have, after a full stint, the front tires will be at 2 millimeters, and the rear tires will be at 1.8 millimeters. It's more than acceptable. It's, it's perfect. It's fantastic. So that's it mainly. That's 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 all you have to do. So let's go back and you know reiterate what you really need to do. So number one obviously is um, uh, driving style. You can you cannot ex escape that ever. And I highly highly recommend you to. I know you have to push. I know you have to defend, but go as. Um, smooth on the tires as possible during the initial laps. So the first three laps, take it easy on the tires. That doesn't mean that you really have to go slow, okay? But be even smoother than usual. Try to, you know, don't go on the accelerator like this, but go a little bit smoother. Um, try not to slide the car when you are, I mean, all that small little things that they are going to really help you uh, and as we saw even minimal gains at the initial three laps pay dividends later on after 60 minutes of race tint so number one driving style number two don't try to improve the tire that gets the more consumption try to ask more from the tire that gets less consumption so in that case, with this car, uh, we have the rear tires that, you know, they are getting consumed quite a bit. You can improve them. And, you know, we saw how you can do that. But try to ask more work, ask the front tires to do more work so that they get more consumed out. And you can do that with the toe. You can do that with, the, uh, with overheating them. You can do that with... Uh, stiffer mechanical grip, so everything stiffer, it will make the, the, the tires work harder, and that means they're going to get consumed even more, so all that stuff. And number three, at number three, try to make uh, the tires to get consumed less. So the rear tires, how do we consume the rear tire less? As less toe as possible, uh, l less negative camber as possible, more open uh, preload on the differential, more stable rear end so that you don't slide too much with the rear end, all that stuff. If you also manage to give a tiny little bit of understeer uh, for the initial laps, you will see that after five or six laps the car will be uh, more neutral than, than before. So you're gonna be able to do uh, a longer, a longer stint uh, you know, 40 minutes of stint with a neutral car, which is very important. Now, um, last thing, also, that's a little bit of a trick. Real, real um, you know, real teams do it. Uh, it's not happening very often in simulation because usually, you know, sim drivers use infinite amount of of tires, but if you are participating into a legal that has a set rule for limited amount of tires, then one of the things that you could use is that you could use one tire set to do just three or four laps for the qualifying. Make sure then to go ahead and do five or six laps with this tire set. That means that then you can use that tire set on the race and start instantly for an already balanced mm, condition of the tire 
both in front and the rear, which will continue for the entire stint, so that you know that you're going to have the whole stint of the of the car in perfect balanced condition. And this is something you can do maybe uh, in in a smaller stint. Sometimes you know you have uh, many stints; it's a longer endurance race, and on one of those last stints you don't uh, have to do a full 60 minutes, you have to do 40 minutes. This is the perfect, um, uh, the perfect occasion to use one of those already used tires. They are still fresh, but they are over the qualifying uh, grip and you can use them to have a very uh, stable uh, and balanced car for the whole stint of 40 minutes, for example. Okay? All right. Uh, questions? Let's do some questions. Thank you, Simsi and uh, Stores and their channel for joining. Ferdinke asks. Uh, What did he ask that uh, spots, uh, flat spot stays if the tire wears down? Yes, because, you know, it, it wears on everything. This would also help if you have to double steam the set of tires. Absolutely. How much load is too much on a tire? Oh, oh God. Uh, it is not a, a single answer for that. Uh, I know, for example, that if you put uh, the rear uh, wing of um, of the original Lamborghini, not the Evo one, you will see that the original Lamborghini, the rear wing goes up to 20 degrees, while on the Evo one is uh, up to 12 clicks. They're, they're not degrees, they're clicks. So if you go from 18 to 20 degrees on the original Lamborghini, it doesn't make any difference on the uh, rear uh, grip anymore. Uh, it, it raises a lot the, the drag, but the grip is pretty much the same. Uh, because as they told me, it's not that the rear wing stalls aerodynamically, the rear wing still generates more downforce, but the load on the rear tires is so much that the tires do not produce any more grip anymore. So yeah. Uh, asymmetric setups are good. Asymmetric setups are good, but you really do have to know what you're doing. You really have to be on the limit of the car and so on. Uh, what about caster? Uh, we have we have a uh, too long didn't watch uh, about caster and alignment in, in general. Uh, tips on how to minimize the grain effect. This is this. This this is the problem with the grain. So those tires, the, the Pirelli tires, are pretty good tires in terms of they don't really generate, you know, uh, graining or blistering. They do, but in in extreme conditions. Okay, in extreme conditions. So you don't really have issues with graining and blistering on the Pirelli tires. If you are getting graining more than average, okay? If you're getting light grain, don't bother. It's there to show you that there is some, but if after 60 minutes you got light grain, even if you just arrive on average graining after 60 minutes of, of stint, don't bother about it. You can minimize it, but don't bother. If you're getting average and over after 60 minutes, it's nothing to do with the setup. It's all on your steering inputs. Uh, unfortunately, I have to tell you that you are turning your steering wheel way too much and thus you are scrubbing the tires on the surface of the road and you are creating tons and tons of graining, which is not the chemical graining from a cold tire, but it is mechanical scrubbing gra uh, generated graining. Uh, my advice to you is if you are find yourself in a normal turn and you are like this, go back by... 20 degrees, 15 degrees, and you will notice, if you do it right, 
you will notice that instantly you get even more lateral grip from the front. And if you manage to do this, it won't be easy because you will need to train yourself to, you know, to limit your, your steering inputs. But you will see that you will have no grain at all. No grain at all. So if you get lots of graining, it's steering input, uh, exaggerated steering input. Uh, no Tortellini, uh, it does work like that in ACC. Uh, if you go to the original Lamborghini from 80 degrees to 20 degrees, we don't really gain. If you do, it's placebo. <laughs> it's your driving. But if that's on the Lamborghini. That doesn't mean it is the same amount of, of downforce on, on other cars. Why Anthony, Anthony Papagier, you asks a very nice question. So why stiffer is consumed more? So let me show you, if I can. So let's go here and go to the replay and have a look at the last laps. OK, and let's go and have a look on what is happening on the tire. Since we have, you know, flexible tires and everything. So as you can see here, as you go over the bumps of the road, OK, the turns and everything, you can see that the tire flexes, all the sidewalls flexes and all the sidewalls and the footprint moves around, right? And obviously the whole tire bounces back to the original condition because there is air in it and that means that practically the tire uh, becomes a spring, okay? Fantastic. Now, um, the tire is not the single spring there is to, uh, to the car. You have the tire, you have the spring of the suspension that also absorbs all those bumps, curbs and body movement. And you have even the chassis flex, which is another spring. So three springs in series, okay? Now, obviously, uh, when you have a bump, and you know how much downforce you have, and you know how much weight you have, and how much load you have. It means that depending how soft a spring is, the whole car suspension and tire will flex and move around, okay? Now, if you start eliminating the other spring, or if you start making some of the springs, of those three springs in the series, if you start making them stiffer, okay? If you make stiffer two of them, the one remaining on the same stiffness will start to work harder. It will go up and down harder, right? Makes sense. So if you make the suspension stiffer, means that the chassis will start to bend more and means that the tire will start also to bend more and flex more because the suspension doesn't absorb so much the bumps. Now, as the tire keeps on absorbing and flexes up and down, it generates heat. And it doesn't generate heat genetically like this, but it generates core heat. Uh, and core heat changes how the surface touches the ground. And, and then uh, this also gets bigger impacts from the ground when you encounter bumps or curbs, for example. So all that uh, impact, higher impacts, higher uh, heat generation ends up in less efficiency. It's a universal rule, you know? It's a universal law of the, of the uh, uh, cosmological law. So less efficiency means the tire will get consumed even more. So that's why. I don't know about that, Jeremy. I'll have a look and, uh, and let you know. Uh, Dimitri, mm, there is a problem, unfortunately, between, uh, between... I think there is still the problem between PC version and console version. So if you're on PC, just set it to 900 degrees on the steering wheel and 900 degrees in the, in the uh, controls. And then leave it like that. The simulator will auto-configure uh, itself for every car differently, so there is no problem. 
Unfortunately, uh, that's not the case as far as I know, for now at least. We will fix it, I promise, uh, on the console. And on the console, you need to change the steering lock to be equal on the different steering locks for, for each car. There are different lists uh, on, on the internet that you can find. The most simple thing you can do, let me show you, is to make sure that everything is correctly, uh, it works correctly, is, you know, go into the cockpit, put your steering wheel at 90 degrees, check if also the virtual steering wheel is at 90 degrees like that. If that's the case, everything is correct. Uh, on the contrary, for example, here I can change the sensitivity on the fly. So if I put my steering wheel at lower turns, okay, and I turn it like this, you see, this is all I do, and the virtual one is already at 90 degrees. That's wrong. Don't do that. It doesn't work pr correctly. So change the steering wheel in a way that, you know, everything is one-on-one, one-on-one, on one, okay? How do you move uh, faster in F7 uh, camera? This one. The uh, center uh, wheel of, uh, so you move, and while you move, you scroll the scroll wheel. If you go forwards, you accelerate. If you go backwards, you get slower. Hello Zeto, hello Luca, hello Anne. Uh, all right. Okay, so yeah, so I think that's it for tonight, guys. Uh, it's getting late, and uh, honestly, I don't have the, the forces to to continue for for uh, you know for another car or something like that. Uh, Things are similar to any car you want, you want to try, honestly. Uh, it doesn't really change a lot. Uh, so if you have a front-end car, probably you're going to consume faster the front tires. So what you need is less tow and possibly, if you can, a little bit less camber at the front, even though usually it's impossible because you need the lateral grip. Um, and more tow at the rear, you know, to consume the rear wheels more and make the car more balanced out. The advantage that the um, front end uh, weight, the fr front ends in cars with front weight have, is that even if you lose grip at the front tires, the car still remains safe because obviously it becomes more understeery, but it's safe to deal with. While in a car like the Lamborghini, the car becomes more and more and more oversteery, and that obviously is a problem to, to drive around. So, yeah. <laughs> Alpha, I yeah, love you, mate. <laughs> all right, all right, cool. So, I hope, guys, that you uh, enjoyed uh, tonight's theory lesson, as we say. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is something that I know many people have issues with. Um, again, you know, make sure that your car drives well for, uh, for the race, you know. Um, it makes no sense, at least as long as we're talking, you know, about, you know, from uh, you know, uh, new drivers to good drivers. From new drivers to good drivers. Aliens, uh, Tortellini, who cares, you know. He, he, you can give him three-wheeled cars, he would go as fast as same. <laughs> um, but for, for all the rest, for all the rest drivers, um, what is important in a race? And you've seen it that, I, I hope that you've seen that, and I hope that I was able to demonstrate to you this thing many times in, uh, in my online races. If you can make 60 minutes of a stint without errors and your lap times are consistent, this is much faster, much faster in the end, and you can gain no, no, not only lap time, but you can gain positions, okay? Instead of having a car that permits you to do uh, some amazing lap times, but every five or every 10 laps, you have a, 
oversteer moment, a scary moment, a went wide moment, uh, uh, almost half spin or something like that. Every time, I mean, you really have to think about that. Uh, if you can gain with an extreme setup, you're gonna gain what? Uh, two tenths of a second, half a second per lap, okay? But if every 10 laps you are losing two seconds because you did a mistake, then it's no use, it's no use at all. Instead, make you know a safe setup that you can keep on consistently driving. Uh, maybe it is two tenths slower, but you can consistently drive this setup without errors for 60 minutes. This is going to help you gain safety rating, uh, consistency rating, positions of the race, uh, I don't know, um, everything, <laughs> everything in life. So it, it is really important to, to do this. So don't underestimate uh, the work that is needed to make sure that your car will remain consistent and neutral as you like it for a long stint, not only uh, a fast car for the first initial five laps okay it doesn't matter if you lose two positions on the first f uh, four laps it doesn't matter i can guarantee you i can guarantee you if you lose two positions on the first four, uh, four laps uh, you can easily gain them after 30 minutes of race easily All right, so again, thank you so much for joining, guys. I hope you had fun. I hope you, you enjoyed it. Hopefully, we will turn doing also some races. And uh, yeah, see you next time, I guess. So thank you so much. Have a great night. Have a nice weekend. Uh, I remind you, on our Discord server, we have uh, a Sunday uh, race, uh, longer endurance race. I don't know if we will, I will be able to uh, participate. Uh, but please do join and have fun. And uh, see you next time. Goodbye!